So we're going to learn a little bit of a new song, and I started that last week. We will review last week's lesson after the prayer, and then I'll turn it over to Roy to introduce all the people who are here. And we're really, again, welcome to all of you. We have after that, well, no, wait, before I turn it over to Roy, we've got one thing to mention. Diane Jenkins, our world's best secretary, is passing around a sign-up sheet for an event that we might participate in if enough of us want to do. And we may only need a skeleton crew of three or four people. So if you have an interest in helping children eat more candy on Halloween, we can bring a table which actually exposes our name pretty prominently at Embassy Suites to a community trick-or-treat event, which I hope they will be managing in light of viral conditions. But anyway, I'll be there to help set up if we do this. I invite you to join me. Uh, if you want to do that, sign the sheet. And, and so that'll save us time talking about it. I think everybody got an emailed flyer. So rather than take time from the candidates, let's just proceed and run. Will you please begin with the yeah. Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, if you'd like to stand or... You... Oh yeah, please join us standing. I, I'm going to salute from right here. All right. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to and the republic, republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you. No song. Okay. You'll join me in prayer, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the beautiful weather you've given us. And be with us each and every day. Be with, be with those members who are not able to attend, either by Zoom or in person. Be with them and pray that their health is, is in good condition. I pray for our country, our nation, the world to um, rid, us, rid us of this um, disease, Lord, that, uh, that you bless us and help us with the vaccine. And, Cure um, so that we can resume our, our normal lives. Uh, I pray for the candidates here today, Lord, that you will bless them and seek your wisdom in all that they do. And I bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. And uh, thank you for your son and for forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Ron and Matt. Now, if you might recall, we started learning a new song last week. This is the review. It's got three words and only two notes. So here it goes. And it's in your key. By the way, I chose the song because it's in your key. <laughs> here it goes. Re sing after me. I invite you to sing. Make new friends. There you go. Make new friends. Time to sing. Make new friends. Now, if you will just repeat that, practice during the week. Next week, we'll learn the next part. And it'll be on your heart and on your mind. Make new friends. Thank you very much. And I look forward to the next part of the program. Roy, thank you. And take it away. OK, first of all, I want to introduce one other guest who is in the room here, a distinguished Kalanian from far, far away, Ron Faulkner. Yeah. Ron is back somewhere. Stand up, Ron. Let's see if we can. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it appears that we are now live on Facebook, on the Kiwanis Facebook page, as well as on KLEK Radio and KLEK's uh, Facebook page. So I think we have all the uh, technology in line, at least for the time being. As long as we have Wi-Fi, we're in good shape. If we lose Wi-Fi, we're in trouble. <clears throat> Today, we have two the two candidates for the District 58 seat in the House of Representatives of Arkansas. That covers most of Jonesboro. Grant Smith is the Republican incumbent. He's in his third term as a member of the House. He defeated Ken Yarbrough in the, in the GOP primary in March. 
He is an adjunct professor for Liberty University and president of Brant Smith Consulting and Associates. Jim Burton is the Democratic nominee, having been unopposed in the primary election. He is an attorney, having operated the Burton Law Firm of Northeast Arkansas since 1978. He served two terms as Jonesboro City Attorney and as a former Deputy Prosecutor. Each candidate will have three minutes for an opening statement and two minutes for a closing. Having drawn names earlier, we determined that Grant will go first in the opening and then last in the closing. In between, we'll be able to ask questions and we'll alternate as to who answers first for each one. Each candidate will have two minutes per question to answer. There will be no rebuttal. So if a candidate wants to make a rebuttal to one question, he or she he will have to do that as part of the response to the next question or in the closing. I will ask the first question and Mr. K-L-E-K, as a co-sponsor of this event, will ask the second. After that, we'll follow our club's policy for political forums, which is that we give priority <coughs> to Kiwanis members to ask questions. If time permits, we'll allow other media representatives to ask questions, but I don't believe we have anybody online right now. Either way, the candidates uh, may want to make themselves available after we end the meeting as close to one as possible. For those of you on the Zoom, on the Zoom app, if you have a question, I think there's a raise your hand icon that doesn't work, then just raise your hand physically and, and I'll, I'll be watching this for that purpose. Uh, if so, I'll try to get to people in order, but it's kind of uh, difficult when I've got people behind me as well and they'll have to get my attention somehow uh, to, to uh, uh, ask questions. Uh, questions will not be allowed from anyone other than Kiwanis members and media representatives. We only have one <coughs> microphone in this room I'll keep it on mute as much as possible. I'll also be muting the candidate after each response, so you'll have to unmute yourself when it's your turn again. Uh, Matt Silas will be keeping time on an iPad, and hopefully the candidates will be able to see that. Uh, however, we'll be giving signals, uh, maybe verbal, uh, as when it gets down to one minute and then 30 seconds. When time is up, a car horn, a car horn will sound. Now for the opening statement, starting with Mr. Smith. Thank you, Roy, and uh, Kiwanians, as well as KLEK for sponsoring this debate today. It's a privilege to be here and share my thoughts and my opinions on policy issues that not only impact the District 58, but the entire state of Arkansas. And as, as uh, Roy mentioned, this is my uh, fourth uh, election cycle or campaign for the state house, and uh, it's just been a real privilege to serve and also to uh, discover what makes state government work, what we've discovered that doesn't work, and uh, so it's just a real privilege for me to be here today. Thank you very much. Okay, Jim. Folks, thank you very much for having me today. And uh, and uh, good afternoon to all of you from the Qantas Club and also Lackenzie Gale from KLEK and your, your generous uh, offer to uh, to cover and give, give uh, uh, some degree of, of uh, communication across this city to uh to, to uh, brandon me in this election um i have been in this city for 42 years now uh actually if you count asu about 48 uh when i graduated from asu i went to law school in fayetteville after graduate school in memphis uh, i had intended to enter the navy and uh, uh the Vietnam War wound down, and uh, I didn't take the officer commission, so um, went on to graduate school and studied public policy, public administration. And when I first got out of law school, we were in a recession. None of the law schools were hiring, and so uh, 
uh, Lonnie Talbert out at ASU was very kindly to take me in and I taught business law and I also taught political science at, over in constitutional law in the political science department for two years full time before I opened my law practice in 1978. And I've been practicing law ever since here. Uh, this office here and an office up at Highland we run for a little over 25 years. And most of my work involves fighting insurance companies and trying to get money for people who've been hurt either in car wrecks or at work or whatever it may be. In that same period of time, I've been privileged to serve Jonesboro as city attorney for, well, about one and a half terms. It wasn't exactly two terms because the incumbent left and I was appointed by the city council and then I was elected in the next election. And then after that, I served on the second judicial district jail board and we were able to get Paragool a new jail and we were able to expand the jail here. And I'm getting the two minute warning. Uh, in any event, I've, I've spent a lot of time here in Jonesboro. I've held several offices for the city uh, and I look forward to giving voice to legislation that's gonna benefit the city of Jonesboro because District 58 is comprised entirely by the city of Jonesboro. Thanks. Okay, before I ask my question, are y'all able to see the, uh, the timer or not? Okay, well, we'll, we'll, give, we'll give you verbal warnings at, at one minute and at 30 seconds. And it, I had my glasses off, Roy. Is there a timer running? <laughs> well, well, running, running. I think verbal is probably going to work better anyway, so we'll, we'll just do that. I heard Richard Wang laughing at me back there, so I yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, there, there was a uh, Jonesboro Sun article on this uh, election early in the week, I think it was, and about the only thing that was discussed were the three amendments that are going to be voted on. Uh, yeah. Grant, you uh, voted for all three of them to get them on the ballot. And, uh, and, but but uh, you had uh, different feelings about number one, I think, and then your four, number two, and three, which is what I get out of it. And, and uh, so I would like both of you to address what you think are the, the merits of one, two, and three uh, as a legislator or possible future legislator. So Brant, you go first. All right. Thank you very much. On issue one, I did vote to refer that out to the people. I think it's uh, an important issue that should allow all Arkansans to have a voice in whether we extend the half cent sales tax or not. I don't think anyone disagrees that we need to uh, improve our infrastructure across the state. And many of you know, we have over 13,000 roadways and uh, highways and roads. Some of them are more rural, but we have a long uh, history of building roads in the state to connect uh, cities and rural areas. And so there is a need for uh, improvement. The reason I supported sending that bill or that, that referred that issue out was because some of the legislators in the district, their roadways are so bad that they're on the verge of being turned back to uh, gravel. So I did support referring it out, but because it was supposed to sunset in 2023, which I felt like was somewhat of a misleading promise from the legislature, I decided that personally I can't support that issue when I go into the ballot box. On issue two, regarding term limits, um, I decided that uh, I can support this. I trust Alan Clark. This issue came before House uh, state agencies, which I sit on, and uh, it made sense. So I'm supporting issue two. Issue three, I'm also supporting that issue as well not to make it more difficult, but to expand the base of Arkansans who need to be on the ballot or on the signature list or petition. 
Okay, uh, just a second. Keep it done. And that clock did show up, Roy, on the screen. Good. All right, are we ready? Yep. All right, Jim, go ahead. Okay, I, I got a signal just in said the host would like you to unmute. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, with respect to issue one, um, one of the things I've been privileged to do here in Jonesboro for, I don't know, 10, 12 years is to serve on what used to be called the, the Streets and Highway Commission, the Chamber of Commerce, and now it's called the Transportation Commission because it takes in the airport as well. Uh, and since my friend Bobby McDaniel says that uh, uh, flying, solo flying is the most unforgiving of human pursuits, I've, I've stayed away from that. I just drive, thank you. Uh, but in addition to that, I've, I also serve on the, on the Arkansas Good Roads Committee. And I think this is the making of, of this into a permanent type of tax will afford the Arkansas Highway Commission the ability to plan in a fashion that it has not had before because it's been, it's been dependent on an up and down of motor fuels taxes uh, from year to year. And so they've had to cat, they've always had to categorize their, their highway projects into category A, category B and category C. And the likelihood if you're in category C, you're never going to see what you'd like to get done. So this way, it would at least be predictable. It would be fair. Uh, it would not be dependent on the vagaries of the, of the motor fuels tax. And the Arkansas Highway Commission would be able to do long-term planning that it can't do right now. So I'm voting for it. Okay. I need to cover two and three as well. I mean, how are we going to Well, you'll, we'll have to come back to that if somebody wants to ask that question again, or uh, we can do it in your closing. Uh, Laganzi Kale will ask the next question. Good afternoon. My question is, what role do you believe that the legislature has in combating COVID-19? Okay, Jim, you'll answer this one first. And you'll need to unmute. Am I unmuted now? Yeah, yeah there we go. All right, thank you. Uh, Lackenzie, my only answer for that is that since I'm a layman, I'm going to, uh, like I think all thoughtful legislators ought to try to do, is to lend as much support to the public health authorities, uh, starting with Dr. Romero on down, uh, to advise and give guidance to the governor insofar as, as, as things that need to be done by way of limitations by way of openings, by way of seating capacity, the things that the governor has been doing during this emergency. Now, I, I know there's a great disagreement about that, and I know Brent is a plaintiff uh, in, in litigation right now to try to, uh, I, I guess, curtail the emergency uh, through the courts. But uh, I disagree with that. I think the governor's been doing a pretty fair job and our, the last time I looked, our COVID cases here are beginning to flatline. We are in that mid-range of, of uh, states where we don't have an increase and we don't have a decrease. But that's a better place to be than on the East Coast. And we will, there are some of these things we're going to have to simply adjust to as a matter of life until, until the medical community in this country, and we have a brilliant one, will eventually come up with a vaccine for this disease. Okay, Brant, two minutes. You need to unmute. Uh, 
he disappeared. Looks like he's been disconnected, so we'll give him, well, let's hold on a minute and see if he can get back on. Should we practice our song? <laughs> he said he's lost him in the Make new friends. Okay, make new friends. Get down there. Make new make friends. friends. That's it. Yeah, we got it. I better back out. Don't have to be on the phone and they were on the scene. What's that, Josh? You want to phone? Yeah, I'm looking at the invite window. Looks like there's no chance in here. He said he's in it. He may have it on here. So click on the Zoom icon. On the bottom. On the bottom. Right here. Go to the left. One on the left. So click show meeting invitation. Can we get him on a, co a phone conference, maybe? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, sorry. Can't hear. Okay, let me give it to him. He's calling in. Hello? Yeah, Laganzi's about to text you the uh, the number so you can get back on. Okay. Oh, go, go back to this guy. I got to text him a little bit more. Oh, that's good. Back here. What is it? The Zoom screen. Exile. Exile. Oh. Go to. Take the maximum 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 uh, let's see now back to here. Uh go to more because you close after you split. So go to more. Uh click and write, click and write. Situations on the all twenty twenty. Okay, click. Copy invitation. You all get to see how I live troubleshoot. Okay, so let's open up Notepad. Let's see, we're going to paste it to Notepad. Here. Um, that's why I said just open Notepad. You don't know have to finish it. Thank you. 
I'm on, y'all. Okay. Password is 505. He's on. Okay. Oh, you got his internet back. Save. All right. Now let me get back to where we were. And. Brain is that you? Yeah, this is you. I don't have video, though. Well, yeah. Okay, he's on by phone. Yeah, I'm here, y'all, but uh, okay. We can hear you. We've got sound, but we don't have video. <laughs> yeah, he said he lost his internet, so we had to call in. We'll just have to give you the warning verbally. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any choices from here. He's just calling in. He's not got a video option. Yeah, if you're if you're just on the phone, it, there's no video option. So well, let's go ahead. Uh, Lagan, do you want to repeat the question? Yes. Okay. So my question again was, what role do you believe the legislature has in combating COVID nineteen? Well, Laganzi, the thing is, right now the legislature has not had a role to play in making decisions, whether it be collaborative. Uh, or whether we just had a seat at the table with the governor and the new uh, Department of Health Secretary, Dr. Romero, and that's, that's what we really want. The people of the state elected us to represent them, and we've been kind of shut out, and uh, that is the primary reason for the lawsuit. It's, it's not to embarrass the governor or the secretary of the Department of Health, but rather to say, hey, we want a seat at the table as duly elected state representatives, you know, here in Arkansas. And uh, we don't have that right now. Okay, we will now throw the floor open to questions from anybody in this room or on Zoom. So who has a question? Well, let me start, I guess. You guys hear me? <coughs> Jim, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, election day will determine which of you represent uh, uh, the, uh, the district, uh, and you will meet, the winner will meet uh, in a regular session in January, and that session will extend and for 90 days, and at the end of the session, you'll have to vote on the budget. That's just the way it is every, every general, every regular session, that's the way it is. On that budget, first up is uh, a proposal uh, by the governor, which be there, um, as he's done in recent years, right? Every chance he's had um, to extend uh, uh, to, to uh, extend Obamacare uh, in Arkansas. We might call it ACA in Arkansas. We might call it this all works. Can you hear me? Yes. Arkansas works, and it will be the most important vote of the seat of the session. Um, Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, what that vote will mean to you, both of you, uh, and uh, how you come by your voting decision, what that voting decision will be. And we start with Brent. All right, thank you for the question. Uh, I heard, I think, most of it, so I hope I'm on track, but um, 
given given the uh, former votes that I've made in opposition to what originally was known as Obamacare, then uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, and then now we call it the uh, Arkansas Works, I, I'm pragmatic in the fact that I believe it's here to stay. I don't think it's a perfect fit in every aspect for the state. It's uh, every year we we have to increase our percentage to receive those funds. Uh, it's a matching kind of thing, but we can make it better. And I think with President Trump's uh, America First Healthcare uh, proposal, and then with his executive order on prescription drugs to give us the most favored nation status to receive drugs at a uh, less expensive price, we're going to be better off. But the legislature is going to have to deal with this uh, more solidly. I didn't hear uh, your voting decision. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I didn't hear, maybe you did say, how will you vote? How will I vote? I'm I'm going to yes or no. I'm going to continue to vote against it until we actually have uh, some better plans that are tailor made to Arkansas. That uh, because right now premiums continue to go up, and it's the constituents tell me around the district that there are times when they have to decide: Am I going to make uh, an insurance payment on my car or or pay my mortgage or am I going to keep my health insurance in force and the fact that we lost a battle over the work requirement uh, that time really is hurt time is up Brent okay Jim did you answer that question you'll need to unmute can you hear me now Yes. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm going to vote for it. If I'm elected, I'm going to vote for it without, without reservation for the simple reason that here we are in an absolutely unprecedented health crisis in this nation. And if you curtailed this program now, you'd throw a quarter million people, 250,000 people here in Arkansas, you throw them off any health insurance and they'd end up on the doorstep of the emergency rooms of the two hospitals here. I've had two doctors with the expertise to know this inform me that if this program were curtailed, St. Bernard's and NEA Baptist would each lose on the order of $25 million per year. I don't know about you. I don't think Jonesboro can take a $50 million hit like that. Not only that, it is just a matter of, of decency for the, the state to be able to provide at a minimum health insurance for the public. That, that was the whole idea behind the Medicaid expansion to begin with when Gov Governor BB introduced it and when Governor Hutchinson has wisely continued it. So no, I, I, I don't worry about the long term because in terms of in terms of revenue stream, because I believe, looking at Jonesboro, a healthy city, a healthy population provides the opportunities for education. It provides the opportunities for work. It provides the opportunities to pay taxes, as opposed to people scrambling to try to figure out how they're going to pay for some kind of health coverage. So I'm for it. Okay. Who else has a question? Robin. Yes, I do. And this is just a housekeeping question. I want to know if our members and our guests would be willing to extend the time a little bit since we had that snafu come up and lost some time, especially for Representative Bryant. Um, if, if anyone has an opposition to that, I'd like to hear it. Objection? Go a little longer. No objection. Okay. None heard, then I do have a question on the subject of public health. 
it's my understanding that we have statutes that directly govern public health, public health decisions, the distribution of authority to make decisions about public health. And so I would like the candidates to, to talk about the legislators, legislation, legislatures uh, access to opportunity to revise, amend, make new statutes relating to public health during the time of an epidemic. Okay, Jim, you'll be first, so unmute yourself. I suppose my, my answer to that would be that this again, this is an unprecedented situation right now hasn't happened in this nation a hundred years since the end of World War I with so-called Spanish flu. And this is the kind of, of disaster emergency that is encompassed in uh, Section 12 of the Arkansas Code. Now, I, the purpose of this lawsuit, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little unclear in because I've read the thing, I've read all the pleadings, and it, and it, seems, to, it seems to turn on definitional uh, distinctions between directives and rulemaking, uh, and, and I'm not sure what, what the goal of it is entirely, except maybe to say that um, the, the legislature and the governor cannot, uh, <clears throat> cannot extend rulemaking authority to department heads, such as uh, Dr. Romero, the head of the health department. Uh, in reading, though, I did, it looks like what they want to do is, is just to say to the governor, you know, we want this emergency brought to an end. Well, one, we've still got people being hospitalized here in Arkansas. We've still got people dying here in Arkansas and in all the surrounding states. And, and we don't have a magic wall to keep people from transiting Arkansas and bringing the disease in. Uh, all, of the, all of those things said, um, you know, what would you replace it with? The governor is given the statutory authority to declare emergencies, and that's what he's done. And, and all that is being asked is not to submit to brain surgery, it's to put a mask on, it's to exercise some measure of, of thoughtful discretion when you're around people to spread meetings out. When I go to mass now at, at Blessed Sacrament, two pews separate an open pew, uh, and everybody has a mask on. And I went to Sam's yesterday afternoon. Nine tenths of the people in there had a mask on. People are getting the message. And and when this Time goes away, up, Time is up. Okay. All right. So Brand is back on video, and uh, you, if you want to mute yourself, you're ready to go. Thank you. I'm glad I'm back. I I don't know what happened on my end, but uh, anyway, the, the purpose of the lawsuit is not to usurp the authority of the governor or the authority of the health department, specifically Dr. Romero. My understanding and the reason that I'm a signator on or a plaintiff on that lawsuit has been to simply invite the legislature in on the discussions. We, we want to be a part of it. I don't think any legislator that I know is opposed to doing the right thing, the humane thing. I wear a mask everywhere I go until I'm seated at my table with my drink and my food order. My wife and I, we wear masks. So it's, it's more broad than just a mask covering. And so uh, for me, I, I want to be a part of the discussions. And we do know that uh, the depression levels are higher than they've been in decades because of people being quarantined to their home, children are not in school, parents uh, are having to juggle homeschooling and working remotely. Plus, when you think about it, many of our businesses in Jonesboro will never reopen because of the damage of this virus just to their, their work. 
And so my phone rings constantly, people asking me, please ask the governor to lift some of these restrictions so we can go back to work. Okay, we have time for one more question. Anybody have one? I've got one since we're still talking about health. Okay. Um, as a citizen and a consumer, I definitely appreciate the work that farmers do and respect them, but the open burning, we're in this pandemic already and to create this other additional crisis with this open air burning and pollutants in the atmosphere, what can be done from your perspective uh, to stop that? Would you be in favor of, of trying to come up with a solution to stop the open burning that occurs in the fall each year? And, and uh, would you be part of the solution? Would you be in favor of that? Okay, and Branch will be first. So you, if you'll unmute yourself, you're ready to go. Grant, unmute yourself. Okay, a couple of years ago, there was an agreement reached with our farmers in the surrounding Northeast Arkansas area regarding burning their fields, when they would burn, when they wouldn't burn, uh, having to do with wind direction, uh, predictions and uh, prognostications regarding humidity levels and that. And I kind of thought that uh, Farmers were doing that diligently, uh, but I do know, traveling up and down the highway to Little Rock, that there is a lot of burning going on, and those winds do change directions quite often, and that smoke does head toward Jonesboro. We're an agricultural state. We are an agrarian-based uh, community where we depend on riceland foods. We uh, depend on our farmers to produce food for the world. And so with that said, uh, I think we need to just continue to encourage our farmers, you know, burn when the weather really benefits you, but also the citizens of Jonesboro because this is another call that I get quite frequently concerning asthma and respiratory problems because of the burning. And it is a concern, but if the farmers are not going to be uh, careful when they set their fields on fire, uh, there may have to be, instead of just a gentleman's agreement, there may have to be legislation that, that forces uh, a different route in this and it's so expensive with fuel cost today to go in and disc under everything burning is quick but it's also uh dangerous okay uh jim if you'll unmute yourself two minutes to answer can you hear me now yes hello Right ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I come from a farm family over in Mississippi County, and it's, you know, I grew up with this. Um, the only thing I can see, and my, <laughs> my friend Marty Boyd is not going to appreciate this because it just gives the sheriff's office more work to do, picking up on where Brant left off and Brent referred to it as a gentleman's agreement. Uh, it evidently is not working. I've got a branch office up at Highland. I go up there every Friday and uh, driving back into town from about Porsche on, I could barely breathe. And I don't know what could be done about it other than other than some statutory authority to give, give county sheriffs uh, the authority to uh, uh, to write tickets where the where the burning needs to be abated somehow. The only thing I can see is that other than that is for the give the county judge authority uh, in their respective counties to uh, uh, just sit down with a map and uh, and have the have the burning be done to, in a phased process over time. 
uh, with farmers agreeing that on a given day and a given time, they're going to burn and somebody else is going to burn the next day. Because like Brant said, disking is, is probably unrealistic because of fuel costs and, and some other attendant features that that and equipment costs that that involves. So that would be my answer at this point. I guess as a follow up, the point is, yeah, we live in a, a agricultural society, but I think there's, there needs to be promotion of what the alternatives are. I mean, that doesn't give them the right to pollute the citizens of Northeast Arkansas, in my opinion. And I was just looking for, uh, you know, if you'd be in favor or, or take a step to kind of promote uh, some way instead of just fines, but also be part of a solution whether it be subsidies or something, because the healthcare costs have to be an extra, uh, astronomical amount of money related to these, uh, these, these burnings and these pollutants. Uh, Jim, I'll give you one minute to answer and also Brent, one, one minute to answer the follow-up. So Jim, go ahead. Well, sir, this is, obviously this is a, this is a problem that's gonna, that's gonna pit two constituencies well against each other and if I'm going to be a prudent legislator, I'm going to want to hear from Farm Bureau. I'm going to want to hear from uh, from the uh, Arkansas Department of Pollution Control and Ecology, because this is a this is one of those classic questions of having to balance the priorities. You know, this happens once a year. It's a transient problem in 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 the sense that, you know, at some point it goes away because uh, because the burnings are over and because people start planting winter wheat and what have you. But for the time that it does occur, it's, it's a damn nuisance and it affects the health of a lot of people. But again, it's going to require some kind of coming together uh, to, to, to hammer out some kind of phased agreement to get this done every year because it's not going to go away. Okay, Grant, unmute yourself. You have one minute to answer the follow-up. Thank you. Uh, I have I have listened to farmers. I've sat down with the Secretary of Agriculture, Wes Ward, who is a local Northeast Arkansas guy. I've uh, visited with parents that have children that have asthma problems, and and even with the milling of rice over uh, across town, the chaff blows onto Washington Street or Washington Avenue. And it, it, a lot of people find it just irritating to have to take a leaf blower out to their car in the mornings or a sidewalk. So I've gone out to Riceland and talked to them about that problem. And uh, the thing is, there is no easy solution. They're already using the finest screens possible. But as long as we have agriculture in our state and in this region, and it pumps millions of dollars into our economy, we're gonna have to learn how to work together for right solutions. And everybody seems to be right. Everybody wants to be right. Okay, we have reached the time where we're a little over time actually, and, and we reached the time for the closing statements and by virtue of uh, our drawing to begin with, Jim will go first and Brant will We'll wrap it up, each of you have two minutes. So uh, Jim, unmute yourself and go when you're ready. He muted again. Okay. You're good now. I'm unmuted. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I have spent my entire adult life in this city. Uh, I met my wife here. Our children were born here. One of them is buried here. Uh, and I have, uh, to paraphrase Lincoln, grown here from a young to an old man. And in that time, I have spent days and days in court and in this office here trying to craft solutions to all kinds of thorny problems. People don't come see me because they're having a good day. They come see me because some machine at the factory took their hand off or because they were in a three car pileup. And then I have to go to war for them. What I have learned in that 
and in the time spent as city attorney and on the jail board and now on the Sky Cops Committee is that the premium is on seeking practical solutions to problems. Uh, the, the time the country has come through right now in, in the, the national government uh, has been a rancorous time. It's not something I want to see in Arkansas. I am a, I am a problem solver and I, I set great store by the idea that people of good faith can sit down with one another and achieve marvels because I've seen it done too many times. And I think that the, the experience I've had in this city over several decades, over serving this city in a variety of elected and appointed capacities have prepared me, along with my legal training, to serve in this capacity from the first day. I'm not gonna need on the job training. I know how to draft legislation. I know how to be a strong advocate for people. And I can, I can stretch that advocacy for the entire city of Jonesboro because it's my home. I love it. And I want to see it grow. And something we didn't touch on at all, my experience as a city prosecutor, I am acutely concerned. Okay. Okay, Brent, uh, unmute yourself and go when you're ready. All right, I want to thank you all for being patient with me and the uh, internet problems. A little more about my background. My uh, family, the Broadaways, came to this area of Northeast Arkansas and established the Broadaway settlement back in 1835. My family has been here over all of those decades. And so even though my father, who was born in Shady Park, right above the old Barry's truck stop and my mother, born out in Bono. Uh, they were in ministry. We traveled and moved frequently as a kid, and uh, it was a great life. But my dad always said when it was vacation time, we're going back home. Jonesboro is my home. He was brought up down on Warner and Walnut Street back, uh, back in the 40s and 50s. And so this is where my home is. And even though I'm not on the foreign mission field with the International Mission Board, when Gail and I came home from China and then later Iraq after leading our Baptist work in that country, we came home to Jonesboro. Our kids have attended Valley View schools and I have eight grandkids here in this community and uh, four married adults with their spouses. It's been a great life for me to always reflect on, I'm gonna be part of Jonesboro when we do come back home. Got just a few seconds left. I, Roy, I've been bumped from an adjunct to an associate professor with Liberty University. I teach business courses, uh, doctoral courses, and also master's courses. That's my day job. And uh, when we're finished here, uh, you know, I'll jump back in, but I want to tell you, I want to renew, restore, and rebuild the economy of Arkansas and give our people a chance at the American dream here in Arkansas. So send me back to Little Rock. Okay, I want to thank uh, our candidates for taking time to be with us and, and ask the uh, folks in the audience to give them a hand. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Robin to adjourn us. Roy, thank you for another masterful job. Thank you to our candidates for spending some time with us today. We normally would offer you a lunch if we could, but I hope you had a good one. Thank you all for attending. I look forward to next week when we have another panel, and I'm really glad this one went. Very well. Roy, who's on next week? We have the mayoral candidates on next week. We're going to take a break from the House. Oh, great. And thanks to the press for attending with us. And I will call this meeting adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.